Aloha, beautiful souls. Welcome to A Better World with Adrian. I am so grateful to be dropping in with you on the May 2024 Astrology Miracles on Earth. So as I lean into how I'm meant to serve, how I'm meant to share, how I'm meant to lead here as we're all building new earth together. Obviously, astrology is a big part of it. Astrology is one of the sacred sciences. It is how we really are in correct, right relationship with messages from source, messages from spirit. And people have been creating with astrology for centuries and centuries and centuries and centuries. And so I just love channeling these episodes for the astrology ahead. It's really powerful. It's an amazing way for you to live in divine timing. So that's what today's episode is. And the theme that really came through as I was sharing and, and studying and connecting with the May astrology of 2024 was this idea of miracles on earth. So I'm really, really excited to share today. Hmm. Before we drop in, let us call upon the altar. The altar is setting the stage for spirit saying thank you in advance. Thank you for this beautiful opportunity to connect, to grow, to learn, to level up, to share, to expand. We have a white unscented candle burning. We have rose petals all over the altar, bringing in the divine feminine, bringing in Venus, bringing in rose, bringing in the Lumerian frequency. We have the biggest rose quartz crystal I own, representing unconditional love. We have a rock from the Eau Valley in the shape of a heart that I was guided to and told to bring home and use to heal my own heart. That is on the altar today, bringing in the Pele energy and bringing in the divine feminine and the healing cool, 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 cool waters. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, spirit. The altar has been set. Now let us take our feet three deep breaths together. No matter where you are, what you're doing, shake out your body, let it all go. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out the mouth. Just feel yourself soften and relax. Inhale through the nose. Feeling full presence in your body. Exhale out the mouth. One last inhale through the nose. Hold it at the top. Feel the divine white light surrounding your whole entire body. Bring an intention to the space. Why you press play today. Exhale out the mouth. Open your eyes if they were blinked and fluttered shut and welcome yourself officially to this space. Okay, the May astrology. Let's dive in. We have such a gorgeous month ahead of us and you know, we are coming out of eclipse season. We are coming out of a, a context really matters. Context really matters. We're coming out of one of the most chaotic months of all of 2024 in terms of the astrology. We are coming out of eclipse season. We had the South Node in Libra at the end of March. Then we had the new moon total solar, solar eclipse in Aries. Then we had Jupiter conjunct Uranus in Taurus. 
we had Mercury retrograde in Aries the whole month of April. It was like, it was, it was a lot. So it's very, very important before we say anything about the May astrology is that it's really important to integrate what just happened in April. It is very, very, very important to integrate. It is very, very, very important to take immaculate care of your body. It is very, 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 very important for all of these things to occur, to unfold. It's really important because none of this will land in our cells, C-E-L-L-S, if we don't fully take time to integrate it, which is why, you know, the work I do with breathwork is so important um, because it's taking all of these energies and coding them into our cells. So we don't get, you know, I just imagine like, you know, you're trying to take a drink of water, but instead of like a nice tiny stream, it's like this power hose. And it's like, we're just getting hosed with all these codes and these downloads and these energetic upgrades. And it's like, we got to take time to metabolize. We got to take time to integrate, to digest, to do all the things with this. So just full permission at the beginning of May, allow it to be slow, allow it to be a portal of integration, journal, reflect, like take sustainable steps each day, but it's really in this like Taurus vibe the empress we start may in taurus season i am a taurus rising i'm recording this on my dad's birthday my dad is a triple taurus taurus is fixed earth it is sustainability it is connection to mother earth it is our values it is our body it is it is our money it is our investments it is beauty Taurus is ruled by Venus. So it's the, the beauty of life. Venus is the planet of love, beauty, art, and money. It's the beauty of life being expressed in Taurus ways. Taurus is all about the home, all about the cozy comforts. It's like rest, receive. It's the divine feminine. She's leaned back. And when you look at the Empress card in the tarot, like she has everything around her that she needs. She has nourishment she has food she has mother earth she has she you know she has the pentacle the wand like she has everything she needs because she's leaned back into her feminine receivership and you know Taurus is very tenacious it's all about hard work and the sustainable effort over time to make things that last right this is you know consistency it's it's all of that and so we start May in this really deep portal of Taurian energy. We're just like relaxing into it. We're less than a week into Taurus season when May arrives. And, you know, we really need Taurus season this year after such a chaotic April. It was a very, very chaotic April. It was a very, very, very chaotic Aries season. You know, Chiron was an Aries, the wounded healer, exposing all of the wounded masculine around the globe. And so I just really want to allow us to land at the beginning of May and be and, and reflect on the massive changes that happened, the massive upheaval, the, you know, the, the good, the bad, the things that we have no idea whether it's good or bad or neutral or anything yet. And just, I really want all of us, including me, to lean into the seat of gratitude and receivership and slowness and integration for the beginning of May. It's not time to rush, 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 rush. Taurus does not rush. Taurus is still like a mountain. <laughs> Taurus move slow and most people don't even realize they're moving, but then somehow they build an empire and they're like, wait, um, how the fuck did you do that? And they're like, oh, I just did this every single day. <laughs> That's Taurus. So we start with the sun is in Taurus. 
the sun, the solar codes of our consciousness of humans is shining in the realms of Taurus. So it's a beautiful time to explore your money, your self-worth, your values, your investments. Unhealed Taurus is super, super stubborn. It can be super, super stubborn, super, super, super set in its ways. Um, and it's fixed. It's fixed earth. And like, you know, fixed water, fixed fire and fixed air. They all have still have this kind of like dynamic quality to them, right? Fixed earth is like, no, this is where I'm at and I'm not moving. Like if you're wondering about Taurus energy, go look at a mountain. <laughs> then you'll learn a lot. You'll learn a lot about Taurus energy. So that's how we start the month. And it's important to just acknowledge where we are. So I really want to just speak into if you're feeling a little bit like energy, energetically frayed or fried or like, who am I vibes or just like, there's a whole different voltage coming through. And it all happened with the eclipses and the total solar eclipse as well in Aries, because the whole expression of the solar codes was changed during that like the sun went out the moon blocked the sun you know the moon and the sun had a conversation that we're not privy to that humanity is not privy to and then the sun came back and it's like wow everything's different so just allowing that nourishment and that grace and just like Taurus it literally rules the body so like how can you love your body like put beautiful clothes on your body you know I'm thinking like organic skincare I, I literally went and I bought a pink pillow for my bed and it's the biggest prettiest pink pillow I've ever seen and I was like this is Taurus as fuck like I didn't even realize it until I got home and I was like oh this is so Taurus right now <laughs> I'm like my house is gonna be so beautiful and Taurus rule is like very connected to the home. Um, not as much as cancer, obviously, but it's very like that stability, that like root chakra vibes and making it beautiful. So that's how we start. May is really, we're really landing. We're really landing. And I feel like that, that word is going to be added to the title of this episode, like landing miracles on earth landing miracles on earth because it's like we get to be in this place where we get to fully land in our human body fully land in whatever happened in april and what that means and make that real miraculously so i'm so excited to dive into the rest of the astrology but we start out in taurus season and then by the end of may we will be in Gemini season, which is really, really wild. It's like coming up so fast. It is coming up so incredibly fast. Hmm. Okay, so let's dive into the other trends that's going on right now. There's a few I'm going to touch on and just, I just want to feel into the overall energy. I'm feeling a very flowy transmission today. I'm feeling very like, like, obviously I have bullet points and I'm going to, you know, give you the juice, but I just feel so flowy and open and receptive. And I'm even like my biggest job during May and that what I'm getting from my clients is like, be in this receivership, be in this receivership, be in this, um, like leaned back, like, yes, do things, but, but with the mother at the helm, mother earth is the matriarch of new earth and mother earth is Taurus. Like that's Taurus, right? So with that in mind, we have two very big planetary movements that happen at the beginning of May. So on April 29th, Venus, the planet of love, beauty, art, and money entered Taurus. And she loves Taurus. She is exalted there. She is at home there. That is her jam. Okay. That is her jam. Venus and Taurus is 
She's so happy there. So you will expand your love, beauty, art, and money codes when you embody these themes of Taurus, when you are taking sustainable action, when you are connecting and grounding to Mother Earth, when you are taking care of your body, when you are investigating and healing your relationship with money, your values, your self-worth, all of that. So that's very, very, very important. And like I said, Venus is the most powerful in Taurus. So it's a, it's a just like luscious, nourishing, like nectar of the goddess transit. And we had just the day after on April 30th, Mars, the planet of war, aggression, passion, and action entered Aries. So it's like two opposite sides of the coin. Venus and Taurus is totally lean back and like, Yes, I'm the goddess and I make art with life and I'm in total receivership and I'm going to make it beautiful and all of these things. And then Mars and Aries is like, boom, bitch, we're, we're going like Mars and Aries is the most explosive initiative. Albeit agitated and and can very well um, do shit that they would regret. <laughs> Mars and Aries for sure but it's also like so much energy you can get so much done with that you can get so much done with that so for Mars and Aries it's gonna be there all the way until June 8th so it's gonna be there for all of May so Mars and Aries is really you know we can expect more volatility with the unhealed masculine energy because Mars is going to go through Aries, which is the part of the whole collective and your unique natal chart, which by the way, if you want to book a reading with me, book a reading in May because I'm going to close my one-on-one -on -one books this summer. I'm really focusing on my breathwork teacher training. I'm really focusing on a new project that I haven't um, shared with the public yet and um, my one-on-one -on -one clients. So if you want to book a single session with me book it in may because those are not going to be available i have no idea when they're coming back i don't know um not at least for a few months so if you want to get in my world get in my world in may if for a single session mars and aries so this part of our lives, Aries, is the divine masculine. It's the sacred warrior. It's action, passion, drive, unhealed. It's aggression. It's war. Mars and Aries, we can expect a lot more things to escalate with war. We can expect a lot more things like that because in its unhealed expression, Mars is a bulldozer. Mars starts fights, right? And so with Mars and Aries, nothing is more impulsive than that. Nothing is more impulsive than that. So what you can do is ask yourself, and, and so this the planet of action, aggression, passion, and war is going to be going through the same part of the collective that just had this major eclipse, the solar, solar eclipse in Aries. It's going to go right over the Chiron, the unhealed masculine energy of the collective. So we can just expect that. That's just like a very volatile energy. The way you can work with this in a productive way is make sure you move your body. Make sure you move your body. Mars is all about energy. People with a lot of heavy Mars placements, like, like if you're an Aries rising, you need to move your body like a lot. That is like very important for you because it's like moving energy. You start energy. It's very fiery. It's like I, I start the whole Zodiac, right? Give Mars a job, give Mars a job and Mars will serve you well. It's when we don't move the energy, when Mars doesn't have a place to go where like Mars will pick a fight or you say something that you regret or you do something that you regret or you go full blast into this, you know, path and you realize halfway down that it wasn't even your path or it's like something's wrong. Um... This is also, Mercury is no longer in retrograde in Aries. However, we have a two-week post-retrograde shadow. So for the first two weeks of May, we're going to be in the post-retrograde shadow of Mercury retrograde. It's like the Mercury retro, excuse me, it's the Mercury retrograde 
hangover, basically, where we're like, okay, wow, what did I learn? What did I learn? What did I review? Um, what did I refine? What did I redo? And then we get to make sense of it and we get to move forward with that new information. And Mars and Aries is going to be like, let's go now. Let's go now. Let's go now. And we get to be very action oriented for sure. Because with the North Node in Aries and Mars in Aries, it's like the destiny of the collective and your individual destiny is sparked when you take audacious, bold action. Okay. And it's just, it's just being aware of, and thank God for Venus and Taurus because burnout is, is like, it's textbook burnout, like Mars and Aries, that's textbook burnout. Okay. So just be, yes, take big, bold action. Yes. Ignite your destiny. Yes. Do the thing. And then also remember we're in Taurus season. We have Venus and Taurus, like make bold moves, but like in a sustainable way, like don't extract your own life force energy, right? That's the unhealed masculine is that overwork, that over efforting, like over, 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 over. And um, I am an expert in that. Um, but I'm still in my deconditioning and I still catch myself in that pattern sometimes. And it's, you know, that's okay. It's like, okay, rerouting yourself and then give Mars a job, give Mars a job, give Mars a job. Then... Okay, the one of the most gorgeous new moons. Literally, like probably in decades. I didn't research the it's it's like this is a extremely rare setup. So there's gonna be a new moon in Taurus on May 7th. And a new moon in Taurus is like the most fertile new moon. It's literally the soil of the earth and you're planting your seeds there. And Taurus is all about nourishment. It's love, beauty, art, and money, all the things we all want, right? And we have had a whole two months where we have had no stable new moon energy. And we had the past three years, we had eclipses in Taurus. So we didn't have a ton of stable energy for Taurus then. And so now we get a golden shining opportunity to plant new moon seeds with this new moon in Taurus. And not only is it a new moon in Taurus that's stable and fertile after a chaotic eclipse season, Jupiter is also in Taurus. Jupiter, the planet of luck, abundance, expansion, opportunity, the great benefic. I like to say Jupiter is the Oprah of the Zodiac. You get a car and you get a car and you get a car. <laughs> Venus is also in Taurus, the planet of love, beauty, art, and money. So we have a new moon in Taurus with the planet of love, beauty, art, and money, and the planet of luck, abundance, expansion, and opportunity all happening on May 7th. This new moon in Taurus could not be more gorgeous, could not be more beautiful, could not be more miraculous. And with the themes of Taurus, that's why I created the theme of this month is landing miracles on earth. Miracles on earth. Miracles on earth is Jupiter and Taurus. Miracles on earth is Venus and Taurus. Miracles on earth is the new moon in Taurus and the new beginning that you get to claim with the planet of miracles and the planet of love, beauty, art, and money right there all working together. And that kind of setup, like, yes, we have a new moon in Taurus every year, we do not have a new moon in Taurus that has Jupiter and Venus in Taurus ever, like, like barely ever. So Jupiter's transits last like a year and a half. So we won't have Jupiter in Taurus again for at least 14 years, I believe. Um, and then with Venus right there as well, it's like, oh, it couldn't be more beautiful. It couldn't be more like the opportunity there is so fertile and it's in the 3D plane. It's in the earth realm, right? Because it's all in Taurus. So it's a beautiful, beautiful time to plant your most audacious 
seeds for your biggest dreams. Like the sky is not even the limit. Like literally Jupiter's there, literally Venus is there. And it's a new moon in Taurus after a three year cycle where we had unstable eclipses in Taurus. It is time to plant the biggest seeds of your life and really do it in, in the earth frequency for your life and then your dreams for an earth we're proud of, for an earth that's healthy, an earth like for new earth, like truly making heaven on earth, those kind of seeds those kind of seeds we get to plant. It's it's incredibly powerful. It's incredibly auspicious. And um, so that's a very, very key date. And then we have, you know, we have Jupiter and Taurus all the whole month and it's going to touch. Venus and Taurus is going to touch it. And then the sun's going to touch it. And it's like, Jupiter's like blessing so much with the Taurus already, but it's being highlighted with all of the planets that are going to hit Jupiter. There's going to be a few Cassinis, okay? And then at the end of the month, Jupiter, the planet of love, beauty, no, not love, beauty, that's Venus. Jupiter, the planet of luck, abundance, expansion, and opportunity moves from Taurus to Gemini. So this is a major shift. It's a major shift. So we're going to move out of like, okay, the biggest expansion, the biggest opportunity, the biggest blessings, the biggest miracles coming through the Taurian lens, which by the way, Uranus is also in Taurus still. We still have a whole other year of that, the planet of shock, upheaval, change, and revolution in the sign of Taurus, the sign of Earth. So... Jupiter is going to go from Taurus to Gemini. So the blessings, the miracles, all of that uh, starting on May 25th, which is an ombre effect. It's not like, oh, you snap your fingers. It was very immediate. Although I will say the moment that Mars entered Aries, I felt it. Oh, I felt that because Mars and Pisces is very different than Mars and Aries. Everything just went full throttle. When Jupiter goes from Taurus to Gemini, we're going to lean into the miracles and blessings and expansion and opportunity in the sign of Gemini. So Gemini is, I call it Gemini genius, the ability to hold multiple truths at once. It is curiosity, the inner child. It's learning, it's data, it's sharing, it's communication, um, it's immutable air. It's an incredibly, incredibly important time for breath work um, because Gemini rules the lungs. So for the next year and a half, like the amount of transformation and expansion because Jupiter rules expansion, Jupiter expands everything it touches. So the good, bad, and the ugly, like, and it, it can expand things that you love and things that you're like, oh, I didn't want that to get bigger. And it just got bigger because Jupiter's there. So it's really a shift. We're shifting the Jupiter frequency from fixed earth to mutable air. And the mutable air is going to dance really, really beautiful with um, Pluto and Aquarius. But that's the other thing that's happening in May that I didn't fully touch on. But at the beginning of May, Pluto is going to station retrograde. And, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a prayer because <laughs> that's literally happening right on top of my natal Saturn. Right now, Pluto is at two degrees Aquarius. My natal Saturn, which that means my Saturn and my unique birth chart, which if you don't know this, book a reading with me, book a session. Um, I have new client sessions, by the way, that are 30 minutes long, if you're interested in that. It's, it's happening right on top of my natal Saturn. So it's like pulling focus to my natal Saturn, which is in Aquarius in the ninth house. I'm here to teach and lead and guide the age of Aquarius. I'm here to architect the age of Aquarius through spiritual teaching, philosophy, all of that, which is what I'm doing. I'm definitely on my path. And, um, you know, Pluto is the planet of death and rebirth and transformation and the death and rebirth that that um 
I'm already experiencing in my career in because Saturn Saturn is um I'm not gonna do a full transmission on Saturn right now, but suffice it to say that I'm experiencing a lot of death and rebirth and transformation in my Saturn. So in the ninth house, how I teach, how I lead, and you know, I do it all through my business. So it's like my expression and everything. And it's like meeting limitations, moving through them, rising, like all of these things are, have been very present in my life, like from the moment uh, Pluto entered Aquarius. And now Pluto is going to station retrograde and go back and go back into Capricorn, where he will slink back into Capricorn, exposing uh, the last time Pluto will be in Capricorn for 300 years, exposing structures that get to die, that are not aligned. So it's, we're in the tower, we're in, here's the thing, we're in the tower moment of new earth, but it's like the tower's falling, but the star's rising at the exact same time. And you, my love, are the star. You are the star. You're the star of your own life. You are the star of your destiny and soul. Like all of this massive change and revolution and upheaval and like the genocide that's happening, it's like, it's faded. It's written in the stars. And it's not like we all have free will. And I know that there are people's, people's souls that chose to come here with certain roles for the evolution of humanity. And, you know, that's playing out very grossly on the world stage. It's important to just know what the planets are doing like this is how we can be prepared like I was able to prepare for 2020 I knew something crazy was going to happen in 2020 because of astrology I already had my website made for my business when the pandemic hit I was looking at the astrology and I had this major download at the end of 2019 I was like it's go time you got to do it do it all and do it now. And I was like getting very clear guidance, like make sure you do it before 2020 starts. And that's exactly what I did. And then, you know, you know, the history is what it is. Um, but there's like that major power shift and focus as well. So Pluto, which it's gonna, it's retrograde a lot. So we don't feel it a lot, but it's, when it makes the shift is going to pull focus. So, but yeah, we, we begin the month just with a very much like slam on the gas with Mars and Aries, but also lean back Venus and Taurus. We're in Taurus season. We have the most gorgeous new moon in Taurus, like in the history of the universe with Jupiter and Venus there. Um, and then Jupiter's going to move from Taurus to Gemini. And so when I synthesize all of this, when I really feel into this month and this energy and what's available for you, for me, for all of us, it's landing miracles on earth. It's so much earth energy with Taurus and this very miraculous Venusian Jupiter vibe of like the seeds we plant are going to land miracles on earth and miracles on earth are what we get to create. They get to be our normal, like Miracles all day, every day, because you decided to be the miracle and manifesting on purpose with the astrology and creating miracles with these energies. Like it's time for the miracles on earth and to land them fully land the miracles on earth. Like we've had, so I'll say it again. I just keep saying it. We've had such a chaotic last month, two months with the astrology. And it's like, okay, we get to fully land it. We get to fully land it in our body. We get to plant these audacious, amazing seeds for miracles. We get to really step into this and make it real. So that is the theme of May. It is a powerful, powerful, just magical. It's just like sparkling and gold glitter when I look at it, when I feel it. And um, I'm just so excited for us. I'm so excited for us. So if you want to work with this energy, if you want to go deep with me into this energy, first of all, join New Earth Temple. We meet every new and full moon for breathwork ceremony. I do private podcasts on each new moon. On each moon. Um, I even do private readings if you are a VIP 
member. So that's the first way you can work with me during May. Second thing is I'm doing a one week immersion called Earth Angel. This is a breathwork immersion. It's very aligned with Taurus season and Venus. It's it's a five day immersion where you're going to do breath work for four days in a row. There's going to be a Mother Earth connection ceremony. And then we're going to go into your new Earth astrology where you're going to learn and code in your unique new earth astrology. So where in your specific natal chart, your new earth astrology is and how to use it. And then there's going to be a Q&A, but it's a five month, not five month. It's a five day deep dive in the middle of May. We start on the 13th of May. So go to the link in the show notes and sign up. If you are interested in this, this is perfect for you. If you really just want to land everything in your human body. And it's very, very important for you, especially if you know you're an earth angel, you know here here to create and build heaven on earth, but you really struggle with the 3D stuff sometimes. Come to earth angel. Like this is going to change your life. Other things going on in May, sign up to be my one-on-one client, baby. Join me, join my world, and let's go deep. I'll be your daily coach, your daily guide, your daily astrologer, your daily projector in human design, your daily breathwork facilitator. These are the ways you can work with me and expand and use this energy in just like the most magical month ahead. Like, wow. I'm so excited for May. Thank you in advance, spirit. All right, that is this transmission. May is all about landing the miracles on earth. So go out there and land them, baby. Be the change, be the light, be you because we need you. Go make a stranger smile because it charges the whole field and that's a miracle in itself. I am so grateful you exist. Remember that you are loved, you are known and you are cherished. I love you so much. And I will see you next time on A Better World with Adrian.